Good morning, everybody. This is Renee from Tailspin Farm, and I thought I'd hop on here today and do a quick little video um, to give you some updates. And just to answer, this is actually answering a question that was in one of my fiber art threads on Facebook um, that is was asked a couple weeks ago, or quite a few, it was probably a month ago when this question was asked, um, and that was how did you get started in fiber arts and spinning? Um, and if you don't follow Crafty Housewife Yarns um, or Erin James on Facebook and Instagram, you need to if you have any sort of fiber obsession or love of yarn. Erin um, has a shop, she has classes, she has um, business ideas. Um, and so she is a great resource for that and you can find her um, on YouTube too. Again, that's Craft, Crafty Housewife Yarns. Um, but the question was, how did you get started in fiber arts? So I thought I'd take a few minutes to sit out here um, and you're gonna hear my dog running through here. Dogs, they're both out here with me today. Um, I thought I'd take a few minutes and have my coffee on the deck and just answer that question. We live um, in mid-Michigan on a lake, actually. We, we are full-time lake dwellers. Um, and it is beautiful in Michigan right now. We are in the middle of our fall weather here already. And um, you can see a few of the trees have changed across the lake, um, but not we're not anywhere near full color yet. Um, but it is just beautiful out. And so I thought I'd take a few minutes. Um, and the way that I got started in fiber arts um, was actually my mother-in-law taught me to crochet like 30 years ago. Um, and I became obsessed then. Um, I was, I loved the idea of creating something with my hands and, um, it went from there. I taught myself how to knit. I am a much better crocheter than I am a knitter. Um, knitting still makes me nervous with, with the two sticks instead of just the one hook, but, um, I do love to do all fiber arts. Um, and about 15 years ago, I there was a class offered at our local yarn shop for drop spindle class. And I thought, well, that's perfect. Um, I can learn how to make my own yarn to crochet with. And so I took the class and there was some confusion between um, the shop owner and the teacher of the class that night. And what she actually brought to teach us was on a support spindle, which is this little thing here. Um, and essentially it is a small wire rod with um, I don't know if this was like a button or what this actually is, um, but a support spindle actually sits inside a small dish and you spin, as you can see, I've spun on this. Um, and that's actually what I learned then um, was a small support spindle. Thankfully that night, the shop owner had also purchased drop spindles um, and so this is actually what she had for us. And we did progress that evening from the drop spin or the support spindles to a drop spindle. And so I learned my spinning on this drop spindle here. Um, and there are different types of drop spindles. Obviously I have quite a few here. Um, my son made me one, this big one here. Um, so that is how I got started and I was obsessed right from the beginning. Um, it was probably one of the first things in my life that I could pick up and do and do it well. Um, it was like I had done it before and the shop owner happened to have a spinning wheel in the shop that night and she said, would you like to come back and try it? And I jumped at the chance to try a spinning wheel. Um, and I, it was a Ashford double treadle wheel. Um, and I sat down at that wheel and I was spinning. Um, it was it it was very natural for me to sit down and spin. I did not have difficulty in learning how to spin. I am fortunate in that way. I know not everyone um, is able to do that. It does take some people more practice than others. But for me, it was just something that was so natural, um, and that really kicked my my uh, passion into high gear from there. Um, and then my next mission was to find an animal that I could raise myself to, to get fiber to spin with. Um, 
And so I went to my first fiber festival here in um, Michigan. It was the Northern Lamb and Wool Festival um, up north here. And I met my first Angora bunny. And I had no idea that Angora rabbits even existed. I fell in love with them there. I almost brought one home. I decided it was probably a better choice to talk that one over with hubby before I did it but um, he ended up buying me two for Christmas that year and that kind of started the obsession um, at that time we lived on a one acre small farm and I thought that the Angler rabbits would be the best choice for what we had um, we did end up over the years we did add pygore goats to our farm we added two alpacas to our farm um, and so that became became a reality for us. Um, even with just the acre of land, we were able to do that and we did it really well. Um, and so obviously here at the lake house, the alpacas and goats did not come with me, but the rabbits did. Um, I have 18 of them here and um, that is majority of what I spin is Angor rabbit. Um, I have both French and English that I raise. And so I got the Angora rabbits that year for Christmas, and then probably within a year, I bought a spinning wheel, an Ashford Traveler um, that I still spin on today, and that's how I got started. Um, it was just a progression of learning how to create things with my hands, and um, I am not a show rabbit person. I am I am strictly a fiber rabbit person. Um, the rabbits do live in our garage. They do not live in the house. I have purchased rabbits from people who have 20 rabbits in their house and that's just not me. Um, and our kids did show for 4-H but that was about the extent of any of the showing that I did. Um, so I'm not a show person. And when I actually first started researching the Angor rabbits, um, you know this was 15-16 years ago, YouTube didn't even exist I don't think. The internet was new and um, I almost didn't get them because I was scared of the things I had read that you cannot spin 100% Angora and they have to be groomed daily and um, you know they can die and all this stuff um, almost scared me away from getting them. I thought they were too high maintenance um, but I do spin 100% Angora. Um, most of my stuff is two ply and you can create just about anything out of it. Angora is seven times warmer than wool, so you don't want to make necessarily a, war a full sweater out of it. Um, but I make hats and scarves and um, I make jewelry out of it. And so you can make all kinds of things that you would make out of regular yarn. And, and that's all I spin mainly here. Um, and so I, I didn't let that scare me to the point that I didn't get them. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. So that is kind of how I got started and it just, it's progressed from there. Um, so I think that I will end that here and um, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I am Tailspin Farm. Um, don't forget to follow Erin at Crafty Housewife Yarns. And if you have any more questions you, or would like to see more videos, you can put those in the bottom here. And I hope to keep doing these videos here coming up soon. We've had lots of family stuff going on. Um, we've had a son get married and we had another son and daughter-in-law that are moving into a new house this weekend. And they are actually adopting two children. So there has been a lot going on with family. Um, and I hope to be able to... Uh, get back on YouTube a little bit more and do some more videos of the rabbits. But if there's anything you'd like to ask or see, just um, shoot me a line down below or you can follow me on, on any of those. So I hope you have a beautiful day and we'll talk to you soon.